What's going on everyone? Thanks for joining us. I am with Thomas DeLauer today. I am down visiting him at his awesome gym. We are gonna go through a persist workout, which is our functional bodybuilding training program. We chose a perform track workout because Thomas has been doing it for the last few weeks and there's some things that you've really liked about it and I wanna get an opportunity to work out with you, maybe talk about some of the nuances of the training program, but for you, what drew you to doing something like Persist? I was doing a lot of functional style stuff, but I think you know what I was missing was kind of roping in a little bit of a hypertrophy work too. And that's mm -hmm. what I've really kind of grown to like about this particular track with the Perform track, is I feel like, hey, I'm getting some like Metcon style stuff, but I also don't feel like I'm neglecting the hypertrophy work. And I feel like the timing that's set up in it is terrific. But I think the thing I like the most, I just feel good afterwards. And I'm at a state in my life where I just want to feel good. I don't want to just beat myself into the ground, right? Yeah, so that's going to be our goal today. We're going to try and stay pretty efficient with our workout, probably about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. We're going to warm up. We're going to get the movement patterns of the day, which is hinging. We're going to do a lot of hips, a lot of hamstrings. We're also going to do some pushing. So it's a hinge push day. So we'll get those movement patterns dialed in in our warm up, and then we'll jump right into some intensity uh, supersets. Perfect. and. From there, we'll finish it out. Okay, and I'll pull up the app real quick. Cool. Our warm up here, then we're gonna kind of move into um, more of this hinge and scat pre fatigue stuff, which Marcus will walk us through, but super intuitive, super easy to follow. So let's rock. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm almost always thinking about combining some breathing component with something like stability and range of motion focused for warm-ups. So it's always gonna be something like a cardio tool and then for the scapular push-ups, since we're gonna be doing a lot of pushing today, I just like to get the upper body moving and definitely the shoulder blades moving through a good full range of motion, but we're not doing big movements right now, just really focused joint specific stuff, just keep it simple. 15 calories, 15 scat push-ups, and then just walk across the floor and as we hinge, focusing on that forward leg, touch, forward leg, touch. Feel like you're opening up the hip, the hamstring. You lost your juice actually walk like this? I think so. <laughs> and I like these warm-up formats where you go through multiple rounds of kind of moderate reps and that way each time you can kind of extend your range of motion build your effort a little bit it's like getting into the gym and getting started with something pretty simple where you don't have to think too much and that way you're not wasting a bunch of time yeah, like for sure oh, I got to get all this equipment out what am I gonna start with? It's like, jump on the rower, jump on the bike, start breathing, and just get moving. And by the third or fourth round, you start to feel like you're awake, your brain's there, push a little bit more effort, and you're ready for your workout. Warming up, very much about like circulation, breathing rate, get the body warm. We did like smaller range of motion, body weight stuff. Yeah. Now it's like, before we get into lifting, and it could be, we're gonna do those kettlebell complexes or barbell complexes, it's let's pick two weighted exercises that we can do for those same movement patterns or the same parts of the body okay. that are gonna be a little bit like of like a gradual increase into weight training. Got so it's like it. we got body weight and, and breathing. 
we're gonna do heavier weights or harder, more challenging complexes, what's a middle ground? Perfect. Cause like, I feel good, but I'm not ready to go and lift yeah. something maximal. Exactly. Exactly. So we're gonna do trap three raises okay. and we're gonna do seated or, you know, dumbbell or barbell good mornings. Okay, perfect. And actually while well, one person's working here, the other person would just be here, try and keep it like a 45 degree. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Thumb to the sky. That's perfect. And then on this one, I mean, I know you re reviewed this with, with Ben, but, no, but this is great. I'm always just thinking about, I like to keep, you know, with the bench height's perfect. You want your hips slightly above your knee. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in like a deep, deep seated position. And then for me, I'm just, I always think about bringing my abs below or between my thighs. Got it. I'm not trying to like lower my chest because that kind of gets people into you know, rounded yes. back, light, slightly unsafe position. So I'm thinking belly button to floor and back up. Perfect. And on this one, I do like to think at the top, thumb stays Got up it. and out. Perfect. That's a lot easier than doing it just in a prone position. Yeah. Even with light plates, I just don't have that range yet. Yeah. I mean, they both have their, their utility, but I know what you mean. I would say like for overhead squat stability and strength, like this is one of the better yeah. of the scap exercises. And if, if when, when you do it with a lot of like intention focus, this is like this trap three raise is really meant to teach good stability in your lower trap. Okay. So just avoid shrugging your shoulder yeah. up and sort of keep it depressed while you're lifting. Okay. Feels good. Yeah, and you're definitely you're definitely doing like a, a much more challenging variation with this plank position. So I'm sort of in this like tripod, okay. but this works great too. It's just another way of like building in some, you know, stability okay, and cool. some isometric work on your other side. I like that. I'm going to do it this time. So something, uh, the other thing I love about this pre-fatigue concept is like these are like accessory lifts that people yeah. might do at the end of training most typically. And it's like when you're totally gassed and fatigued at the end of training, sometimes the quality of those accessory lifts just get they get like so low that people aren't really putting full energy and attention to it. Whereas like if you do it at the beginning, like I was really thinking about a lot of things that at the end of training, I might just be like, ah, oh, I'm gonna skip it. Yeah, and you're thinking like preemptively, like thinking here's, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So it's like you're, you're treating it in much more of a prehab sense. Yes. Just consciously anyway. To totally, yeah. totally. So it's snatch, push press, lunge, one. Snatch. Push press, lunge, two. Okay. So, so is this an incorrect snatch by kind of almost cleaning it like that if I don't have full, I get a little bit sketched out because my shoulders just go straight into it. I guess that's a decent, halfway decent snatch, right? It is, yeah. Okay. Actually, I like the hinge. Okay. The, the thing that I would change, and this is the coaching cue that I teach people, is when you're doing a snatch, Keep the elbow kind of pinned to your side. Okay. You don't want your arm to swing out. Oh, okay. That's where you get that big flop over yeah, of the kip. Okay. So if I do the big out and over, yep. I, it feels funky. If I keep my elbow tucked to my side, it stays real close and it, it'll find its way into position much faster and smoother. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and just try and be a little bit, yeah, there you go. Punch that hand at the top. There you go. Yeah. That's that way better. Bad. Yep. Yeah. I gotta get a couple on the other side. I get the wobbles a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, we really have to start focusing a lot more on every single rep. And yeah, 
you found yourself falling behind, that's why we offer up like ranges. It's like you could go down to four complexes instead yeah. of five. Something that was ingrained in me a lot as a competitor in CrossFit was the idea that you need to be able to think even when you're tired. Yeah. And it's like when you're fatigued, mental mistakes cost us. So I love these training formats that make you kind of have to think yeah. while you're getting tired. Hell yeah. Nice. Good job. So that's have you done much lifting with tempo? In the past, has that been a focus of yours ever? Uh, I used to like time under tension stuff a lot, so I paid close attention to tempo. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I was doing tempo specific work. Yeah. You know, just paying attention to it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Cool. Well, this one is, uh, what, what is, just reference the, so there's tempo on the push ups, not on the sumo deadlift. So we're just going to pull heavy for, you know, four to five reps. And I'm just thinking, like, not like reset at the bottom of each rep, okay. so not tap and go. Um, and then there's really no, it's like, there's no rest, just moving right right into the push-up. So like finish your set, kind of uh, slow walk over there, but then get right into those tempo Perfect. push-ups. Perfect. And that one's for 10 with a two second lowering. So really just controlling that, the eccentric up fast. And if it feels, you know, really manageable, then we'll start loading plates on each other's back. This is perfect. This is a perfect example of like why I think this is so effective. Like this, this is the kind of thing I wouldn't see in a typical, even you know, functional workout normally, where we're combining sort of this deadlift with almost hypertrophy tempo work. Exactly. You know, that's what I really dig. It's like I can feel like I'm still getting, like it's always a toss up. Like sometimes I'd find myself doing a metcon in the morning and hypertrophy work in the afternoon because mm -hmm. I don't feel like, like oh, I didn't get quite enough of that stimulus I really want. I feel like my central nervous system is fried. Yeah. But I don't feel like I actually got that muscle stimulus I really wanted. Here yeah. I feel like I'm getting both. Exactly, and I think people love that. They love to see their metrics change. Like they chase performance. That's a really rewarding feeling. Yeah. But they also want to like feel a pump and they want to like sure. get their muscles to like grow yeah, and be 100%. really metabolically active. And that. That happens a lot more with you know higher time under tension, higher rep ranges than it does with this. Like yeah. you can go a heavy set of four on the deadlift, but that's not going to like you know increase the metabolic sink of your yeah, muscles exactly. as much. Yeah, and this is, this has been great. Like sumo deadlifts have been great. I've got L4, L5, L5, S1 ruptured discs, and yep. sumo I can actually get more range than I can otherwise. Not great, but yeah. better than a kick in the teeth, right? Form look okay? It does, yeah. I mean, I can. My assumption is that based upon your your injury history with your back, mm -hmm. you've adopted a much more upright posture. Okay. Like, hey, if I stay more vertical, I'm not going to put as much tension on my, you know, yeah. lumbar spine. Um, and so, as a result, when you're pulling, you're you're staying pretty upright. Okay. And to get around your knees, you uh, are letting the bar swing out a little yes, bit. Yes, hundred percent. So, you know, the only cue I might give is. Pull your knees back slightly or pull your knees back and out so that you don't have to, have to move the bar. Yeah, it's around the work I'm doing. Yeah. 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 But again, the, the, the trade off is I'm vertical. Now I'm a little bit more hinged. Okay. So you're going to have to rely more on hamstring, glutes to protect your low back. That's Which all. Is, yeah. And then just for the sake of going through it. Yep. So it's going to be two seconds down. Yeah. And because we've got that those kind of dip bar set up, we can really extend range. That's something I, you know, we try and teach our, our athletes in our program, like how to think their way through the stimulus that they're trying to get. Yeah. And it's like, well, what are we trying to achieve here? There's lots of ways to achieve this thing. We could add weight plates to your back. That's one way to, to get a more intense stimulus. Yeah. Or it's like, what if I just change my grip a little bit and I can now go deeper into a range of motion? Heck yeah. Because nice. like I can do a 45 pound plate on my back to here, but you know, yeah, that's... is that extra range 
maybe that's what I'm chasing is I want to like open up my chest more. I want to yeah. like work in deeper positions in my shoulder. No, oh, that's great. For bulletproofing, you know. And then once you achieve that deep range of motion, then then start adding weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pull those knees back just a touch. There you go. Pull the bar in close to your shins. Originally, leg press injury like 10 years ago, and then reared its ugly head again. Uh, it always was doing something really simple. I was doing RDLs like super light, and just it was uh, right after my son was born, oh. so crazy sleep deprived. Yeah, of course, yeah, right. And uh, yeah, all it took was 135 to do it. You know, so it's, so now I'm just I'm just cautious, but you know, being able like doing more deadlifts has helped me. Yeah. It's uh, contrary to what people might think. It's like actually doing the movement and just being smart about it. Yeah. So a lot of focus then. Let's go. Pull that bar in close. Yeah, I felt great. That's it's a it's a big mental obstacle for me to even go up above 225 on deadlift just because I just right. And it's crazy once you have an injury how you just create these blocks. Of know. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And that's like for me something I hope people coming into our program like you probably noticed earlier on, and depending on which track they follow, like we'll introduce barbell lifts, introduce bigger compound lifts 
with a lot of control points to them, like these tempos or these kind of shorter rest cycles where you really can't go that heavy purposefully. Yeah. And the, and the reason it's like, we're looking for a stimulus to get our muscles to grow, get our brains to develop strength. And that doesn't have to be at max loading. Yeah. At 225, five reps every minute on the minute with a tempo. Okay, you're lifting in a, in a zone that feels confident and like safe to you in your brain, but it's also creating change. That's and that's like, point. I think something people miss. It's like, oh, I'm scared to lift heavy. It's like, don't worry. We can make it hard and we can get stimulus for change even at weights that feel mentally confident to you. Yeah. Oh, the shoulder pop! Yeah, that's good. It was, it was real. <laughs> it's like a delt workout like I've never felt before. That's a decent amount of volume. That is, yeah. yeah.